Welcome back from that short break. You're still watching New Vision TV News with me, Rorathina CJ. We continue looking at more stories and now it is news in business. In business, the communications industry regulator Uganda Communications Commission has injected 2 billion shillings into boosting e-learning in rural secondary schools through equipping them with computers and the internet. According to Emmanuel Muyomba, the manager of Rural Communications Development Fund at UCC, the three-year pilot program targets 50 schools countrywide. Paul Busharizi joins us tonight to explain why now and what this means. UCC earns uh, 1% from the revenues of all telecom companies. Mm -hmm. So with that 1%, <coughs> um, they have a mandate to extend uh, telecommunication services to those far-flung areas where right. it might not be very, com it might not be commercially viable to get Mm. Uh, so I imagine this two billion is part of that, and um, it makes sense as you said earlier. I mean, you know, we have to move beyond just imparting industrial age skills to our children. We That's have to, true. you know, broaden their horizons. And what better way than to give them access to the, 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 the now, yes. the, 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 so that they're part of the you know the global shift. Mm. E-learning is uh, something that has been going on. Even us, we're still learning some new e-things. Uh, will this help in any way in their education? Do you think somehow it is going to help in the rural schools in their education? Absolutely. I mean, just think, uh, when I think back to myself in school, even up to university, or even up to university, um, access to information was very limited. You, you did what the teacher taught you. Sure. Uh, you know, imagine you put these kids in a space where, you know, they, you could reach a point where you don't need teachers anymore. That's you true. just say, what are you studying Vasco da Gama and what he did uh, going around the Cape of Good Hope and did it and the kid will get everything down. So you, it's, you, it's almost impossible to underestimate the, the power that, that could come with an efficient uh, connectivity for, for these kids. Mm. And... Um, the difference many times between a rural kid and a, can you call it an urban kid, is mm -hmm. just exposure. That's, that's all. That's all. If that kid thing. gets the access to the same tools like these urban kids, you probably, you know, put them to shame. That's true. Mm. So, that's great. Right. So, uh, those of you in uh, who are worried about your children in rural areas, please make them get access to computers, get access to the internet. It's, it's not only bad, it's always good. There's a lot of good on the internet. Well, thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Thank you, Lynn. We now take a look at our Daily Pearl of Africa series today. It is the gorillas in Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. Unlike other parks in Uganda, Bwindi Impenetrable National Park is known for the diverse of its species that it contains. These range from gorillas, birds, butterflies, exotic plants, and even frogs. Located in Kanungu District in the southwestern part of Uganda, Bwindi is most notable for its gorillas. Let's take a look. In the valleys of Kanungu district is where Bwind Impenetrable National Park lies. So many creatures harbor in this national park, but what attracts tourists here are the gorillas. They were once known to be the origin of human nature because they move, eat, give birth, and also have the six senses, like human beings. But what makes them different from humans is that they do not talk. Tourists who come to this park mostly engage with them freely as they embark on gorilla tracking. They enjoy climbing trees, wandering around the park and even eating leaves. What is more interesting to see is how they jump from one tree to the other. Other features you can find here are birds, butterflies, frogs, chameleons, geckos and many 
endangered species. From a pile of Africa stories, visit our website, which is newvision.co.eug forward slash Pile of Africa. A newspaper, the Sunday Vision, is also another home of adventures. So grab your copy every Sunday for Pile of Africa stories. We move on to the feature story today. Uganda is one of the countries that have suffered the attack of ticks and tick borne diseases. Over 30% of cows die due to ticks annually. However, scientists at the National Agriculture Research Institute have developed the new vaccine to save cattle farmers. Let's have the story. With over 30% of the calves lost the tick bone diseases such as theeloriosis, babesiosis, and anaplasmosis, farmers have been worried of the next move as the acaricides are not killing the ticks. Farmers have been reporting many instances of acaricide failure, which was making their costs very high as they tried various acaricides. To come from a small tick like this. Mm -hmm. However, all that will be history after the scientists at the National Agriculture Research Institute developed the new vaccine. Right now we are evaluating one of our candidate anti-tick vaccines. It's an antigen. It's genetically engineered. And... Uh, we isolated it from ticks, our common ticks. We have three common ticks to diversify livestock in Uganda. And uh, that's the molecule that we are evaluating to see how protective it can be against our local ticks and how it can protect across the different ticks. So this is what we have done. Now it's about three months since we started this. There is, however, a challenge because the ticks may not be eliminated since they can survive in very tough conditions. It has been documented that we cannot totally eradicate ticks. Ticks have, uh, they are very difficult to eradicate. Even scientists have, uh, it is documented. You can only control their numbers, but you cannot totally because they have even few natural predators or enemies, and uh, there are many. They, they hatch many eggs, so and they're always in the environment, in the bushes, so it's not easy to eliminate. The process of developing the vaccine includes taking samples from different breeds of cattle using different types of ticks. The local breeds are usually a bit more resistant mm. to the ticks, mm. unlike these. And for these, even if they are they are being bitten by a tick, they have even some level of resistance against the diseases they spread. Mm. But one tick can kill each of these any of these animals. Much Henry Mulindwa, a research with National Agriculture Research Organization, says the anti-tick vaccine will control the ticks. Basically, the mode of action of this vaccine is that instead of the tick killing the animal, the animal will be killing the tick. It will be the other way around. Once it bites the animal, it, it won't be able to reproduce. So over time, the population will be quite out. Often, the male tick dies after mating and the female tick dies after laying eggs, which amounts to 2,000 to 18,000 eggs and with a lifetime of three years. That is it we had for you today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch my news updates and other programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website, which is newvision.co.ug forward slash video. You can also follow us on social media. Facebook is the New Vision. Twitter is at New Vision Wire. Instagram is at New Vision Wire. And our YouTube channel is New Vision TV. Catch up with me on my Twitter handle. I am Ruth the Voice. I have to say good night. But let me end with a fact file.